Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And today we're at the Starrett booth at IMTS in Chicago. And um, Starrett is a manufacturer of precision measurement and metrology solutions for manufacturing companies. They've been an industry leader for more than 140 years. Now, today in the booth, what we're going to look at is some precision tools and gauges, uh, vision and optical comparator solutions. Um, see, we're going to look at a, a granite surface plate, a force measurement system, some precision gauges as well, and a couple other things because there's a lot going on. In the Before we do that, I would like to introduce uh, Emerson Lemmy, Vice President of Industrial Products North America for Starrett. Uh, Emerson, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having us here. It's a pleasure to uh, be part of uh, this uh, video. Uh, so we are so proud of being, you know, for uh, more than a hundred years uh, manufacturing in the U.S. So it all starts with our founder, Leroy Starrett. Uh, more than 140 years ago, he invented the first uh, combination square. And since then, he's been very innovative and in, uh, providing high quality in everything made in here in Massachusetts. I was going to say, I, I, when, when I look around, I can see that all of your products are, are made in the United States and have, have always been, right? Yes, has always been. We do a small portion uh, overseas in different locations in the world, but most of, of them are made in the USA. Okay. And what is, what is the goal, the overall message that uh, Starrett wants to convey to the people that come to their boat booth and the folks here at IMTM? So what we are trying to accomplish is helping manufacturers that making parts and have needs for measurements to help them and do it smart and more with more productivity, bring innovative solutions, things that will automate their measuring process, their recording of the message, of the measurements, and that's why we are trying to accomplish and tell them what we could help, how we could help them. Well, perfect, and we're going to get right into that now. We're going to dive into some of what you're showing here in the booth, uh, so stick with us. So with us right now is Tim Cucci, Precision Hand Tools Product Manager for Starrett. And Tim, what are we looking at today? So we're very pleased at the show to be able to show our wireless measurement data collection system in real time. At the touch of a button, Data Shower 4.0 allows operators to send measurement data collected to their digital gauges directly to a software program for reporting and analysis. Okay, so this is wireless? No cables, no, no end nodes or backpacks needed. We have completely eliminated the need for any uh, manual data entry transcription, which is very, uh, can be cumbersome and error prone. Okay. And so if this is a wireless communication, is, is data security any kind of a, of a problem? Uh, absolutely not. There's a multi-layer security system set for this um, that will not allow any bad actors into it. Uh, transported data is encrypted using a multi-layered approach that absolutely prevents any outside access to the data, whether passive or active. Okay, now I know in, in the past, uh, a long time ago, you know, wireless has kind of been around a long time, but, but data, uh, uh, distance has been an issue. So what kind of distance, kind of address that issue? So we, we, we have four uh, schemes is what, is what we call here at Stair. We have, a, a, to use a wireless tool, we'll get you zero to 30 feet, and with a push of a button, and as you can see, there's no cables, no nothing added, it can go right to your, to your mobile app. Now, if you need to go beyond 30 feet, if you have multiple cells and your QC is in different areas, then you would have to attach an external radio, a backpack, and simply, with a push of the button, that will go right to an Excel spreadsheet, and from there, you can take that data, and manipulate it however you need for your specific application. Now, if you need to go further than 200 feet, you're going to take a remote gateway, and that will get you another 200 feet, allowing 20 tools to speak to that one gateway. If you need to go further and further, you just piggyback these upon each other, and that will get you yards and yards. So, so these are these are like repeaters, kind of. Exactly. Okay. So you just you just use as many as you need to to get the distance you need. And if you even need to go miles, what we have here is a Starrett Yagi antenna, which will get you miles to send that data. Wow. Still with the same security from zero to, to one foot. Uh, so be, besides the, the data sure and, and the wireless equipment that you're showing, uh, what other uh, precision tools do you have? So we, we are very excited to announce a whole line of approximately 50 
electronic gauges. Absolutely excited to show them right over here. And these are new? These are brand new. Okay. Announcing them right now at IMTS. We have 40 new indicators ranging in a half an inch, one inch, two inch, four inch range, 50 millionths accurate, your standard feature or even advanced features, all dependent on your need. IP67 rated to protect in harsh environments with dust, dirt, water, coolants, and oils. We also have a family of wireless depth gauges, a family of wireless portable thickness gauges. Using the same technology that I had mentioned here, we're standardizing that across our product lines. We also have an electronic inside micrometer to measure inside diameters, and that ranges from 6 to 40 inches. So very, very excited to show this this week. Yeah, this is great. Well, Tim, appreciate it. With me in the booth right now is manager of Sterrett's special gauge division, uh, Andrew Morin. And what is a special gauge? A special gauge is something that is designed per a customer's application. That's something in our catalog, a tool in our catalog will, all, will not already fulfill. So if uh, you need a micrometer, but it's not something in our caliper, you need something a little bit more dynamic than a micrometer, our custom special gauge division makes those. Okay. So it's a specific gauge for a specific application. Do, do you have a couple examples you can show us? I do. So um, the first one is our bar gauge, or most commonly known as a rail gauge. It measures a diameter from A to B at a specific drop. So we have rest pads that set our datum, and then we have A and B that take our measurement. Uh, we could do these at any diameter, up to 80 inches or so, okay. and we could do any drop from no drop to eight or 10 inches or more. And what's this gizmo? Uh, this is a hot steel gauge. So when you're making hot steel in a foundry and you have to measure the thickness of it, you could take this gauge and go in, squeeze the trigger, wiggle it around, and then pull back out. And then the digital indicator. And the gauge is on the end, okay. Yep. So it's designed to keep the operator as far away from the heat source as possible. And they're used in ovens of 1200, 1400 degrees. Um, and it's much faster and much more accurate. It takes a matter of seconds to take the measurement compared to the old way of minutes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. A, a precision gauge, but it's mounted on something like looks like a, you know, just a grabber, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you've got something hidden behind you here, which is. <laughs> um. Okay, now that's a caliper. Oh, micrometer. <laughs> a micrometer, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a micrometer. Yeah, so uh, this is one of our honeycomb micrometers. It's very, very light. Um, you'd want to hold it, you could. Oh, wow, what's that mean? Uh, it's aluminum honeycomb. So it's the same type of things that floors, yeah, it's the same thing that floors and airplanes are made out of. Okay. So um, this one's accurate to tents, so four decimal places. Okay. Um, it's used like a snap gauge, so it'll move okay. this way, or you can use it as a micrometer. Um, and we do these, the largest I've seen so far is 96 inches. Wow, okay. So, so if somebody wanted a special gauge uh, and they come to steer it, how would they, that process work? How'd they get going on that? Um, they could email specialgauge at steerit.com or they could call in and we would talk to them. And what we would do is we'd set them up with an engineer and that engineer would talk to them about what their problem is and guide them down a solution path. And then we would design that solution for them, provide it to them with a quote. And then if they approve it, we'll start manufacturing of it and that the engineer will work with them the entire time. There's no nine different people you have to go through, it's that one point of contact and we'll handle all of it. Okay, perfect. Well, Andrew, thanks, appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with me at the Starrett booth right now is Greg Mache, uh, engineering manager with Starrett, and uh, we're going to look at some vision systems and optical comparators, right? Uh, what do you got at the show? Yes, sir. So what you're looking at right here is the AVR 300. We also have the HDV400, which is sort of our digital version of an optical comparator, as well as the HD400, which is a traditional optical comparator, as well as our largest and newest offering, the AVX550. And how would you say that, that vision systems and let's say the new breed of optical comparators have um, impacted uh, manufacturing? Well, I think you know the main thing is it's become much easier for, uh, you know, companies to get into this kind of technology as the uh, as the prices come down and as the technology becomes more available you know more and more folks are able to move to this instead of using the traditional uh, means of metrology um, and that really helps when it comes to you know speed of data capture trending you know reporting automatic reporting um, you know making sure that everybody is uh, accountable 
for what they're measuring and that kind of stuff is much much easier to do nowadays. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would imagine that inspection processes have been, uh, what, sped up? Um, uh, you're collecting, what, more data, more precise data? I mean? I would say both, yeah. With the vision, because it's using an edge detection algorithm to grab those points, it's very repeatable. In fact, you can see that here on our SBC. As these things are um, spitting out these runs, these are all tolerance features on this part that we're measuring here. Right. And this is all real time, by the way. So as this comes out, you can see our ranges for the past few hundred measurements are in the tens of microns, which is something that the vision really excels at. When you look at an optical comparator, um, because you have to have somebody making um, a uh, determination where that crosshair is, that crosshair itself has some width to it, which means right. that there's some you know, lack of repeatability and also some subjectivity when it comes to making a measurement. Okay, and how has all this tied into, let's say, Industry 4.0? Well, for instance, since we have this SPC here, you can basically get real-time updates onto how well your parts are being measured and how the uh, tolerances are coming out um, immediately. You don't have to wait for somebody to go review those reports. It's coming out real-time so that if you're making scrap, you're gonna know it immediately. Um, and I think that's really important for our users. Okay. And, and finally, can you show us an example of maybe pattern recognition, uh, I don't know, automated inspection using one of your systems? Sure. I have it set up right here. So let me go ahead and stop this routine. Let me show you how we can measure our gear here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a new part program. And that will basically clear it all out. So all I need to do, if we have a part that's recognized in the field of view, all I have to do is hit the uh, play button and it's going to pick up that that's a part that it has in its um, directory, apply that pattern and then measure it immediately. Okay. So you can see it's going to run this. Now I put a part with a uh, bad tolerance on it on purpose so you can now see it's got a big red screen. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Part's bad, you will want to know that immediately. Yeah. So it's, you, you simply position the part underneath the, un underneath the, c the camera and hit a button and it does the rest. That's right. Okay. Is there any automation going on um, with these types of systems where the parts maybe are being put, uh, automatically being put underneath the camera or, you know, you know what I'm talking about? So that, we have the capability to do that. We haven't had an opportunity to really work with an integrator around that specifically. Okay. But no but reason they, why it couldn't happen. No reason yeah. why we couldn't. There yeah. is the I.O. available to do, you know, basically have M3 tell the machine, hey, go ahead and put a part in. Is the part good? Is the part bad? Okay. It will sort it appropriately. We've we've shown that before, um, but yeah, it's not something we are into now, but we could be very okay. soon. Um, so the SBC chart up here, this is this is live. This is uh, uh, as data co is coming in. This is being updated. Correct. Yeah. So we just measured that gear. We printed a few different gears, some of which are good and some of which are bad. So you can see the bad ones are these big spikes here. Between these two red lines is our good tolerance band, right? Okay. So as long as you're within these, you have good parts. As you approach these yellow dotted lines, that's where you're getting close to being out of spec. And um, as it goes out of spec, they'll turn red like this. So you'll actually see these fields turn yellow. Yeah. Or So green is good, yellow may be bad, red is bad. A lot of the times you'll see that with uh, tool wear, as the tools wear down when you're making parts, you know, your, your diameters will get smaller in bores um, and so forth. So, you know, You'll be able to see that in real time here, and then you can use that data to try to figure out how to, um, you know, optimize those uh, those processes. Okay. And I know you can't dem uh, demonstrate it here here at the booth, but I understand this can also be accessed uh, via a, a mobile device on on a phone or something like that. Right? Yeah, that's right. SPC software is designed to be that way. So okay. if you have it set up correctly, you could be, you know, running stuff offline or you know, at nighttime with the lights off and uh, look at your phone and say, oh hey. Uh, I'm you know. in spec, I'm not in spec, whatever, yeah. Okay. Right, yep, that's, that's how that, that software works. Okay, well Greg, appreciate it, thanks man. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm with Eric Perkins right now. Uh, Eric is the regional manager for force measurement at Sterrett. And Eric, I know that um, every day we use a lot of uh, a lot of things that require force or materials testing. So tell me a little bit about Sterrett's uh, force systems. Um, Sterrett makes a wide range of uh, frames as well as software platforms. So we offer from the most basic all the way up to the advanced and everything in between. So in your question about force measurement and what do we test every day, things like the, what you see over there is an average spring. Okay. They're used in car doors, to ballpoint pens, to you name it. We don't give springs a second 
look, it's just something that's used in the background. They have to be tested. <laughs> Everything needs to be tested to make sure it's safe for the public. So on this fixture over here is our new stair quick change spring test fixture. And one of the things that we looked at doing is how can I make it quick so that the operator's not setting up and tearing down, changing over from one capacity load cell to the next. Stared offers a very quick and easy way to do in that. We just disconnect the load cell. There's two little thumb screws over there, slide the whole assembly out, slide the new load cell with the other uh, universal platinum on there, tighten it up, plug it in, turn it on, and you're ready to go. So it's a lot, it's a lot faster for the for It's the a lot faster yeah. for everybody to okay. get in and change the capacity of the load cell because not one load cell fits at all. So you need smaller load cells and bigger load cells and different applications on springs. Okay, cool. Uh, what about this uh, equipment over here? MMS 5000. Okay, and both of these are new, I should say, right? Both these fixtures, the that new fixture and the new long travel extensometer okay. are new is what we're showing here at IMTS. Okay. And to talk a little bit about the long travel extensometer, they're used to calculate uh, elongation. Okay. So you would technically take the little clips over there, clip it onto the sample, and as the crosshead moves along with the sample, the extensometer is tracking that and me measuring your overall distance moved, okay. which will calculate your elongation. Oh, so it's used for elastomers, plastics, you name it. Uh, there is other extensometers out there that are smaller, used for metal. They don't move as far, so they don't have to be as big. But as you can see here, this is a, quite a big long travel, right. as the word says, right, right. extensometer. Because when you're testing like elastomers, you need that, you you need that travel. a long time before they, Correct. they break. Okay. Correct. Okay. Great. Well, Eric, appreciate it. Thank you. It's good talking to you. I'm with Carlo Schwinn, the general manager of Truestone Technologies and the Weber Gauge Division of Sterrett, here to talk about um, granite surface plates. Uh, so what do we got here today? So what we have is a sample of our granite. Uh, Sterrett's one of the largest producers of granite in the world. We, uh, we do the things that a lot of people just can't do. Everything from metrology items on up to semiconductor and uh, everything that you would need in your shop to measure and produce a good quality part. And what's, I mean, granite surface plates around since the beginning of time, practically. Uh, what's going on new with surface plates? Okay, so one of the things is, you'll see this, very, this pink plate here. And this pink plate's been around for decades. It's been a very iconic brand for us. It's in most of the shops in the country. But recently this quarry is closed, and we found another North American granite that with the same great wear properties, but a little better grain structure, a little smoother finish, and uh, we're switching over to what we call the superior red granite. And that'll be transitioning right now. And uh, uh, describe to me some of the other things that we, that we see up here on your, okay. and I know it's a bunch of uh, granite uh, samples over here as well. Right, right, so we, we make everything from metrology accessories like uh, V-blocks, parallels, but a lot of our business, 80% of what we do is customized granite. So we'll customize anything from a simple surface plate with inserts like you see here, to through holes, to any okay. kind of shapes that they may need to, to make their process more efficient, to inspect their parts, do whatever. A lot of our business is, uh, is related to, to precision motion. So what you see here is a uh, is our precision rails with a, a screw and you can measure parts. A lot of these are put with stages okay. so that the parts will move automatically. We do a lot of work for the semiconductor industry. I was going to say, I understand that, I, I wasn't aware of this, but I guess the semiconductor industry uses a lot of granite, what, surface plates? Well, not surface plates, but custom granite. So oh, custom granite, a lot okay. A lot of bridges, like you see here, where we'll, we'll assemble the granite in various parts, and, uh, and we'll make uh, whatever they, they want us to make. So we're really a, a, a collaborative design shop for them. We, we work with their design, make their parts, and they do everything with from uh, printing the computer chips to inspecting the components, uh, inspecting the reticles, the, the parts that make the chips, uh, all the components, dicing it later. A lot of those parts use granite in it. The reason they use granite is because of the ultimate precision you can get and the stability. So it's very good at vibration dampening, very good at uh, flat, flat surfaces, very thin. Uh, tight tolerances. So, uh, is it, and is that a fairly new? Is that a fairly no, new it's market? Been, it's been around for a long time. Really? Okay. But it's growing leaps and bounds. So it's been it's been really phenomenal. Uh, Truestone has grown with that market. 
we're probably the absolute leader in, in what we are capable of doing, and uh, we're proud to serve some of the best companies in the world. Okay, all right, appreciate it. Carlo, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay.